Welcome to Securing America with me, Frank Gaffney, the program that's a kind of owner's manual for protecting the country we love against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to God's glory and out of his kingdom. We are challenged with a host of problems at the moment, I think it's fair to say, on the international stage. Some I, among them believe that these are the opening phases of truly a global war. We're witnessing it playing out at the moment in Ukraine in the old fashioned sense of war, kinetic that is. We're watching evidence growing of the aspirations of the Chinese Communist Party to do the same in, well, East Asia, the Western Pacific, and perhaps beyond. A man who has been really very much involved in public policy on all of these issues, of late in particular at places like The Hill, is a friend and colleague now of some time. Uh, Joe Bosco is his name. He has had experience at the highest levels of the United States government, notably as the guy who was in charge of the China portfolio at the Defense Department in the office of the Secretary of Defense. And we always look forward to having a chance to pick his brains about what's going on at the moment. Um, first in Ukraine, and, and then we'll come to China in our second block. Joe, it's good to have you back on Securing America. Good morning. So Great. Much for good to be here. Let's start with... Uh, your assessment of Ukraine, uh, the strategic importance of what's going on there, and the, well, lessons that are to be learned from our conduct and that of others uh, in the run-up to and now in the course of this horrific invasion of the place by Vladimir Putin's Russia. Well, I think the place to start, uh, frankly, is uh, back in uh, 2014 or even really 2008 when the, the United States prevailed upon NATO to virtually invite both Georgia and Ukraine to become members of NATO. And a few months after that invitation was extended, uh, Putin uh, invaded Georgia. Uh, the United States was relatively quiescent about it, not just the U.S., but the international community generally. And uh, six years later, with Obama in, uh, in office, uh, Putin took a big chunk of uh, Ukraine, Crimea and uh, eastern Ukraine. Right. And again, the international community uh, more or less yawned and uh, thought it was uh, par for the course and did nothing effectively to either stop it mm -hmm or to deter it in the future. So then fast forward to 2022, uh, under this administration, uh, he's now decided to go all the way and uh, has gone into Ukraine big time. And again, we uh, the, the message from the West is one of trepidation. We don't want to uh, have a world war, as Biden put it, and, and a world war would ensue if we were to defend uh, Ukraine. Even though we'd invited it to become part of NATO, we would have had a formal obligation to defend it. So it's been a muddled, muddled uh, policy approach from several administrations in the U.S. and from the international community generally, including NATO. Uh, we're trying to get our act together now in, in defending parts of, of Ukraine. But even there, the, uh, the level of defense is quite constrained. I think Biden said yesterday that we would not, or the day before, that we would not send any weapons that could reach Russia. Well, any weapon can reach Russia if it's fired from close enough to the border. So, but, but the message it sends is, again, we're nervous, we're afraid of Putin. And that is a very bad message to send when we're trying right. to uh, prevent his aggression uh, in uh, Eastern and Central Europe. Yeah, and, and that's what I wanted to get to next, Joe, is that there are those who believe that this is really none of our business. Um, we don't have a favorite between Russia and Ukraine. I think mostly they would condemn what Russia is doing in Ukraine, to be sure. But the argument is basically it's uh, something that we can uh, essentially avoid focusing on uh, if we are properly focusing our attention on the main threat we face, namely from the Chinese Communist Party. And in our second block with you, we're going to talk more about 
what we don't need, do need to be thinking about and doing about China. But you, you just sort of touched on the countervailing argument that uh, I don't think is often enough made. Are you of the view that Vladimir Putin's ambitions are not confined to Ukraine? And were he successful in crushing opposition to his present invasion there, we would see additional threats against nations, including nations that are part of the NATO alliance. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, Putin has left too much to the imagination. He declared uh, a few years ago that the greatest tragedy of the <clears throat> greatest catastrophe of the 20th century was the uh, demise of the Soviet Union. And he's made clear that right. uh, his intention to reconstitute it uh, as, as much as possible. It's not just Ukraine. As I said, he first invaded <coughs> excuse me, uh, Georgia in 2008. Uh, he has uh, forces in Belarus and Moldova, and uh, he has his eyes on the Baltics. Uh, I think we've, we should have learned the lessons of history that when someone who is as monomaniacally aggressive as, uh, as Putin is, we have the example in the 30s of Hitler, we better listen carefully to what they're saying and take them serious, take them at their word that they have very large ambitions. And if we make concessions here, that simply feeds their appetite for the next step. It does not satisfy them or suddenly convert them into a benevolent uh, uh, competitor. They're out. He's out for blood. He's out to reconstitute the Soviet empire, whether he calls it the Russian empire or, or religious, spiritual kind of empire, whatever it is. He wants other people's territory, and he's going to get it unless he's stopped. Yeah. And, and I guess this is the crux of the matter, is that uh, he, I think, has sought, in addition to you know, reconstituting uh, some sense of empire, uh, revenge against the people who brought about what he calls the greatest catastrophe of the 20th century, as you've said, namely NATO. And so uh, unless stopped is kind of the operative word here, uh, the ambitions to uh, retake areas that he considers to be part of, you know, his empire, uh, the Baltics, perhaps even a Poland, uh, let alone the Moldovas and the Belaruses and so on, um, maybe Romania, who knows, uh, would be an argument, as you see it, for ensuring that he is stopped in Ukraine. And Joe, we've only got about a minute and a half before we take a break, but are there things that we should be doing right now in Ukraine to ensure he is stopped there and does not have, in fact, the opportunity to venture further? Yeah, in my view, we've been much, much too timid in terms of the aid that we provided Ukraine. We ought to be sending the heaviest of, uh, of equipment, uh, tank, tanks, anti-tanks, missiles, uh, anti-aircraft, and I think we ought to accept Poland's offer to send MiG fighter aircraft to Ukraine for Ukrainian pilots to fly, and we backload, backfill the, uh, the Poland arsenal with uh, up modern uh, U.S. equipment. And I think uh, they're not asking us for a no-fly zone. They're, they're not asking us for troops on the ground, They, the Ukrainians. They're just saying, give us the equipment. We've got the will. We've got the spirit. And we will defend our country. We are doing everything possible to facilitate that objective. Joe Bosco, we have to leave it at that for the moment. I hope you will come back to us with updates on all of this. Your insights are tremendously appreciated, uh, notably in your pieces at the Hill newspaper. Next up, we're going to speak with Kyle Scheidler about the challenges we're facing with our law enforcement personnel and the environment in which we're asking them to operate. You're not going to want to miss this really important conversation with the director of the Homeland Security Project of the Center for Security Policy. Straight ahead. Real America's Voice presents War Room with Steve Bannon. People have legitimate questions. They want to see data. They want to see evidence. Don't miss War Room every weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern 